the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. Mass intentions for today. Soul of T. L. Joseph. Thanksgiving to Our Lady of Valentine. We are also praying for all your intentions, dear brothers and sisters. Intentions close to our heart. So many people are still getting infected by COVID and we pray that they be healed. There are people who are getting obligations out of this, even after having come back from the hospital. And that's causing a lot of anxiety and stress to people, particularly financially and in terms of own health. We ask God to see him that he spare us this pandemic and that we listen and understand what he's trying to tell us. Let us pause to prepare our hearts to celebrate these mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may God Almighty have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who in the abundance of your kindness, surpass the merits and the desires of those who call on you pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. You must have heard of my career as a practicing Jew, how merciless I was in persecuting the church of God, how much damage I did to it, how I stood out among other Jews of my generation, and how enthusiastic I was for the traditions of my ancestors. Then God, who had specially chosen me while I was still in my mother's womb, called me through His grace and chose to reveal His Son in me, so that I might preach the good news about Him to the pagans. I did not stop to discuss this with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to see those who were already apostles before me, but I went off to Arabia at once, and later went straight back from there to Damascus. Even when after three years I went up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and stayed with him for fifteen days, I did not see any of the other apostles. I only saw James, the brother of the Lord, and I swear before God that what I have just written in the literal truth is the literal truth. After that I went to Syria and Cilicia and was still not known by sight to the churches of Christ in Judea, who had heard nothing except that there one time persecutor was now preaching the faith he had previously tried to destroy, and they gave glory to God for me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response of your psalm. Our response to the psalm is, Lead me, O Lord, in the path of life eternal. All together. Lead, Lead me, O Lord, in the path of life eternal. eternal. O Lord, you search me and you know me. You know my resting and my rising. You discern my purpose from afar. You mark when I walk or lie down. All my ways lie open to you. A response, 
Lead me, O Lord, to the path of life eternal. For it was you who created my being, knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you for the wonder of my being, for the wonders of all your creation. Our response, Lead me, O Lord, in the path of life eternal. Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I call you friends, says the Lord, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my Father. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord is with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. She had a sister called Mary who sat down at the Lord's feet and listened to him speaking. Now Martha, who was distracted with all the serving, said, Lord, do you not care that my sister is leaving me to do serving all by myself? Please, Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you worry and fret about so many things, and yet few are needed. Indeed, only one. It is Mary who has chosen the better part, and it is not to be taken from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, across the two readings, the first reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians and the Gospel according to Luke, I want to pick out four characters and tie them up together with whatever comes at the end. The four characters are Paul in letter to the Galatians, in the Gospel, we have Jesus, we have Martha and Mary. Let's look at Paul. Paul is giving a testimony about himself. How he had no contact with the Apostles. He was a persecutor of the Jews, of the Christians rather. And then he had a conversion experience on his way to Damascus when he was carrying letters to kill the Christians and the followers of the way and from that personal experience of conversion he encountered a God Jesus and he began to relate to him and in that relationship he grew and he so loved Jesus that he wanted to now preach Jesus without reference to the early apostles Peter and James and the others he had not even gone to Jerusalem in fact after his conversion he goes to Arabia and from there back to Damascus so as to in a way you know solidify that personal experience of conversion with Jesus infill himself and then go and become the apostle of the Gentiles so this is Paul's sense of discipleship a personal conversion and relationship to Jesus and from that he goes forth to spread the good news we look at the gospel with the three characters Jesus, Martha and Mary Jesus, we know, is the Father's revelation to mankind and he comes to give the news par excellence of the openness and the invitation and the warm love of God to all people in the Father's kingdom. And as he teaches, he begins to gather disciples. There are Pharisees, there are scribes, there are Roman soldiers, there are Jews, there are Samaritans, there are women, there are men, there are children. So many people gravitate towards Jesus because of his kindness, his hopeful word, and they see some Messiah in him. Now, according to the convention of the time, 
a rabbi and Jesus was considered a rabbi, he had largely or mostly all men disciples. And they would follow the rabbi, they would sit at his feet and they would listen and they would learn and they would take down notes and they would write. But Jesus wanted to go beyond because as he says, I have come that all be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And who are the all to be saved? Not only men, not only the scribes and the Pharisees, but also the women, the children, the sinners, the Samaritan, all these people. And from that point of view, we see now the other two characters, Mary and Martha, who we are told in the scriptures, Jesus was very close to, and their brother Lazarus. He perhaps frequented their home for a meal, just for a relaxed chit-chat, whatever. And among these two sisters, Martha and Mary, there were two, two men were there. And uh, Jesus uses that homely, comfortable atmosphere, even there, to teach us about his kingdom and about discipleship. And what is Jesus telling us? I think Jesus is telling us that in as much as we serve the church, in activities, in doing things through the associations, for example. We are serving God. I'll come to an example later. And in as much as we pray in church quietly, blessed sacrament chapels, retreats, and quiet, and maybe not showing external involvement in terms of service and work, we are also disciples. There's space for everybody. The example I want to give you is a convent. This may not happen in all convents, but largely, you know, there are sisters who are actively doing work. It could be an old age home, it could be a home for children, it could be a home for special children who are challenged, etc. Now, there are these sisters who are hands on, they go to the clinic, they are going to the social work center, they're going to the villages, karne wale log. There are other sisters who are in the kitchen. They're doing marketing, they're cooking, and they have to feed the inmates, the residents, the people who are in office, who are taking the phone calls, who are doing the mighty big organizations. There are others who are old, and they are on the last leg of their life, and most of the time they spend in the chapel. Looking at Jesus, dozing there. All of them are doing God's work, no? All of them are doing something that is connected with the kingdom, according to their stage and state of life. But what is important is that the common denominator across these four people, Paul, Jesus, Martha, Mary, and I and all of us, is and should be discipleship. If we are disciples of the Master Jesus, we will somehow find our own medium between contemplation and action, between prayer and service. God will convict us. He will inspire us to do our best. This is Jesus' work. But our heart has to be willing. It doesn't mean that Mary never helped Martha. Of course she did. But that day particularly she must have been so attuned to Jesus. What is Jesus saying? And Jesus doesn't even shoo her away. You go. You're not supposed to sit here. Only men are supposed to sit near the rabbi. But Jesus, you know, is a convention breaker. Not because he wants to do it, but because that is the Father's will. That all be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Sometimes there are people who only work and only pray. There are others who are only outdoors and there are others who are always inside. And then the insiders say they go out and they don't allow us to go out. And only they are going here and there. Of course, that also has to be settled by administration now. Why does one poor sister or a brother has to remain in the kitchen only and you gather and here and there and you see the world, whatever it means. So, there has to be a balance even in administration. So, with Jesus' eyes, we need to see collegiality. We need to see community. We need to see God's love being expressed within the context of our discipleship. My prayer today is that all of us, in our own way, find our medium of discipleship to Jesus and the common denominator binds us into being witnesses to the kingdom of God. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice may be an acceptable gift to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice <coughs> at your hands for the praise and glory of your name for our good and good all of his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with beautiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Eternal God. For in goodness you created man. And when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through Christ the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven, blessed seraphim, worship together in one exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble adoration. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit in them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread. And giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, Savior, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting as worthy to stand in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Oswald, our Bishop, and all the religious, the clergy, and those who are consecrated. Remember those for whom this Mass is offered, and all our intentions. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, our patron saints, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. That our bond of discipleship to Lord Jesus and to one another be strengthened, Formed by faith, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from anxiety, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance to your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to share the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. so as to be transformed into ardent disciples of yours and your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you and with your spirit. May God Almighty bless you, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Each one of us, whether we are a Martha, a Mary, or a Paul, we are types of disciples for Jesus. And we ask God to help us find our resources so that we build a better kingdom for Jesus.